What up, players? It's World Boss Tab. It is Mode. Decided to get started again with my project, uh, First Founding Legions, painting up all of the First Founding Legions in order in their current paint schemes that you can find on Games Workshop or any of the uh, modeling websites and stuff. So, this is a member of the 12th Legion, the World Eaters. And it is a Corn Berserker, which is most of the models that you'll find in the World Eaters colors in the current 40k uh, universe. So these are the, the red and the brass colors. The colors you're going to be needing are Corn Red, Abaddon Black, Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, and Agrax Earthshade. Now stay tuned because after Project First Founding is all, all wrapped up, I'm going to go back to Project uh, Great Crusade. And that is going to be the, um, the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy era versions of these guys using Forge World models and painted up in their pre-Heresy or Heresy era color schemes. Thanks for watching everybody! So we're going to get started with our Corn Berserker here, and the first color we're going to use is what else but Corn Red. So I've got my wet palette here, I've been doing a little bit of other work, but I'm going to uh, get started with my Corn Red, so I've got a little spot there. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Papa Nurgle has seen fit to bless me with some of his latest poxes. I usually get sick at the beginning of the year, the school year that is, so September-ish, but oh man. No matter what you do, you know, you use Purell or hand sanitizer, wash your hands all the time, Somehow or other, some stray viruses or strains of bacteria will find their way into your immune system, and that is that. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. Let's talk about corn berserkers. Corn berserkers are <clears throat> the, they're like the remnants of the World Eaters Space Marine Legion or Chaos Space Marine Legion, they are what's, I guess, what's left of the World Eaters. I, th I think that's pretty, pretty accurate. I don't know if there are non-World Eaters Berserkers out there. Uh, I guess you can be a Corn Berserker if you dedicate yourself to the, the bloody God Corn, but I think traditionally World Eaters the World Eater Space Marine Legion were the ones that have been known to be these corn berserkers. It's great studying up on the fluff and the background of an army. When you look at their entries on Lexicanum or the 40k wiki site, you learn that they were, the World Eaters were always a very bloodthirsty and savage kind of legion. And whereas the the Space Wolves were also quite savage, they had a little bit more of a sense of restraint to them. And uh, I guess I don't I don't know if you want to call it honor, because the the World Eaters were also known to have very strong sense of martial pride and honor. But the Space Wolves were always able to rein in their bloodthirsty kind of their more bloodthirsty excesses, whereas the World Eaters were known to pretty much just say, you know, forget it and let's just do whatever we want so that we can spill blood and, and kill, kill, kill. It's interesting knowing that they were a part of the Emperor's armies that would, you know, if, if, if the situation looked like you just needed to get in there and kill everything, then you would call the World Eaters if you wanted a little bit more restraint or you wanted to do a little bit more of a tactical strike, you would 
call some of the other legions. <clears throat> but they were always known as the the bloody, uh, the bloodthirsty ones. So there's that. Okay, while we're waiting for that to dry, why don't we start painting up the black areas. So I'm going to use Abaddon Black now, and we're going to start by painting up the bolter casing, or the bolt pistol casing, I should say, and any of the areas in between the armor, the, the joints. I think I'm actually going to let it dry a little bit more. <coughs> Ooh, that's me. Nurgle. So, yeah, we'll just get started with the bolt pistol for now. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. I've been getting lots of nice positive comments on my on my videos and I, I really appreciate all of all of the feedback, all of the input, all of the criticism. I, I take it and I read it and although I won't you know, I try to take everything with a, with a grain of salt. Uh, comments and criticisms alike. Uh, I, I always do appreciate people taking the time to to write. And that's why I always say it's really important for any YouTuber to try and respond to all of the comments. <clears throat> Good or bad. So what I'm going to do for now is I'm just going to paint just about everything black. And then we'll go back over in a little while. Can't really do much at this point while the red is drying, so um, what I can do is kind of plot out what I want to do next, and that is to paint Abbott on black into all of these areas you see here, the joints between the armor plates. Yeah, you can't really do anything with them now because the red is still still drying, but we'll wait for it to dry and then we'll come back and hit those. Okay, so here we are back, painting in all of the joints in the armor. going to do is be painting the axe, the chain axe, in black as well. I decided to equip this model with the chain axe because the chain axe was almost synonymous with the world leader, world eater legion. Many other legions preferred the chain sword. Uh, the chain axe had more of a very savage and brutal way of killing. It was very messy and bloody and it was just the kind of thing that the world eaters really enjoyed. So decided why not? Perfect. For the joints on the upper body. You want to look for where the elbow pad meets the armor. Okay, so that's... <clears throat> that is that for now. Now we're going to go to the... Uh, the brass. Okay, so we're moving on, and we are going to be using the color Balthazar Gold to paint all the gold areas on our 
World Eater. I like to start from the bottom, so I'm starting from the leg armor. Yeah, so I did a lot of research to get ready for my uh, series of videos because there's so much lore and fiction behind all of these first founding legions. And um, I'm just having a great time. I like reading all about Angron and uh, all of the legionnaires. I think I've said it before, but I think one of the most interesting facets of the game to me, where the fiction and the fluff is, finding out where, you know, where did the, where, where did the good guys turn evil, like the world eaters, at some point, must have uh, had some good in them or some nobility, or some honor that they, uh, especially since the, the Emperor, when the Emperor found them before they reunited with Angron and got the uh, behavior chips implanted into their brains <clears throat> when they were all from Terran stock or from, you know, from pulled from the, the people of Earth to to be in the Space Marine Legion. Now, at what point did the did Angron's uh, primal savagery kind of take over and make the Legion into what it became? I always find it more interesting to play to play an evil army when you have those questions kind of at the back of your brain, you know? Like here you've got an army of psychopaths and bloodthirsty killers. Um, but what did they, you know, why did they join the heresy? Was it just to, <clears throat> just to shake off the, uh, the emperor and his, I guess his rules. just so that they could kill people without having to worry about being held responsible for it anymore. All of the evil legions, the traitor legions, kind of interest me like that. So you want to be careful when you get to the shoulder pad if you're using these shoulder pads because it's really easy to get some of the uh, some of the gold color onto the red area that you've just painted. So you just want to make sure that your paint is on the tip of your brush and that you use very easy going uh, brush strokes. You don't want to do like too long, you want the strokes to be short and controlled.
Yeah, so I'm no uh, expert on world eaters' history, but I always thought it was interesting how they were the legion to uh, Angron hated psychers and psychic powers, and so when when they were uh, turning against the emperor, turning to chaos at the beginning of the heresy, there are these uh, in the stories of Black Library. There's this one great novel about how the his his librarius, the librarians of his chapter or of his legion, try to try to calm him down and get him to see reason. And uh, this was like the the nail in the coffin for him on how he turned against them. And he had all of his librarians wiped out, thereby forever making sure that his legion was ripe for corn to take over. And for those of you who don't know or are new to Warhammer Forty Thousand and the fluff. Uh, Corrin is one of the four major chaos gods who just kind of loves and takes joy in, like his big thing is just killing, slaughter, and war, and bloodlust, and giving yourself up to that kind of stuff. And I've heard awesome, awesome stories about how before he was, like also had, he also had qualities of honor and martial pride like he would never attack a defenseless person or somebody who could not defend themselves because there was no glory and no honor in that I guess somewhere along the way that part kind of got wiped out of the fiction and then it just became something more of it doesn't matter you know what just kill everybody let's kill everyone and that's kind of too bad because I like the old uh, aesthetic of corn being an evil, horrible, uh, homicidal, psychopathic god, but having like some sense of of honor to him. up his death card. Oh, you don't want to paint up my death card, eh? Well then, here, how about a <coughs> nice little flu? <flute? coughs> to change your mind. So the reason that I'm painting the back completely in gold is because if you look at the front, <coughs> it is binding around the helmet, but then there's no binding around the back, so that makes me think that the whole back is in gold. <coughs> oh. I'm just looking for anything that is kind of like this this binding that goes around the red armor area anything with these rivets and bolts in them <coughs> <coughs> and that's pretty much what I'm looking for now for these for the backpack here yeah you know, I'm just kind of <clears throat> painting the the edges, the binding.
The lady boss was telling me all this interesting stuff about chicken noodle soup. Or chicken soup. Uh, chicken soup, chicken noodle soup is like why it's so good for you if you're sick. Apparently, it's because there is some kind of nutrient in chicken meat that's kind of like right by the bone where, I guess, <clears throat> I don't know if it makes you feel better or if it makes you healthier or something. There's got to be some of you out there who know what I'm talking about. So one of the most interesting parts of world eater history to me is that after the heresy, the world eaters were fighting a bunch of emperor's children, and uh, this was when they were still kind of a cohesive legion. They hadn't really splintered apart or anything. And then night fell, and all the world eaters were just kind of hanging around, and then this one guy, Karn, is like, ah, oh, if you won't kill them, then I'm gonna kill you, ra ha ha ha, and then he started taking this big flamethrower and started killing everybody, world eaters and emperor's children, and Korn, in the chaos, in the warp, saw this and he was like, oh Karn, that is awesome, you are the man. And that was the last time that the world eaters fought as a cohesive legion, ever since then they've broken apart and they've become these roving, I guess mercenaries just fighting with whoever they felt could get them to the battle quickly. <clears throat> Which is why uh, you only see world eaters as... or you don't really see world eater armies. You only see berserkers. <clears throat> okay, the last part we've got lead belcher, and this is the silver paint, so... Uh, I started painting and filming and uh, I lost the clip so I'm just going to show you what I painted. The silver parts of the bolt pistol which includes the back, the uh, clip, the barrel, the grip of the pistol itself, right there. <clears throat> also the chains that wrap around our berserker's breastplate. If you're painting a berserker that does not have the chains, then obviously you'd skip this part. There we go. And I also used it to paint the chain hanging from <clears throat> his chain axe. I'm also going to paint onto the chain axe the teeth of the chain axe. And the um, little grill pieces in the backpack here. And um, there's some tubing or piping on the backpack that I think would look good with a silver paint job. So right here. There are a couple more gold details that, now that I've seen <clears throat> what the model looks like, I want to paint in. So we're going to go back to our Balthazar gold now. And we're going to paint these gold details here on the chain axe. Yeah, 
Yeah, so if you want, you could make a Chaos Space Marine army that is World Eaters themed, but um, I don't know how, I guess, you know, you could count it as a World Eaters Space Marine army. You could just say that maybe one World Eaters Space Marine has been able to <clears throat> kind of calm everybody down enough to unite under one leader instead of just being a bunch of sellsword mercenaries. You could try to say that you're leading a unified force of world eaters that are about to go on a, their own black crusade without Abaddon. Uh, that would be an interesting way to theme a world eaters army. I've never, I've never thought that the World Eaters were very interesting because I always thought that they were kind of limited by the fact that they're, you know, their uh, their fluff and their fiction just makes them seem like a bunch of drooling, bloodthirsty lunatic killers. But I bet that with a little bit of creativity, you could you could do some pretty interesting things with them. We're also going to paint in gold these skulls hanging from his armor. So there's this one on his shoulder plate, and there's this one hanging from his chain axe. They're a little too small to be human skulls, so I'm just going to say that they're little fetishes that he carries around with him. Also, if you want, paint these rivets in Balthazar gold. It's a little bit of, an, of extra work, especially to clean up if you get some in the black area, but might be cool to do. So cleaning up models <coughs> is uh, something that I like to. Uh, talk about sometimes if you do some fine detail work like these these rivets on the chain axe and you get a little bit of paint to the surrounding areas cleaning up around that area there's always that extra step that you may not want to do but will in the end will help your paint job look really awesome so I highly recommend it Can paint black in the mouth grill with added on black. And I think there's a little bit of gold detailing to do on the bolt pistol, and that'll be it for the first stage. Base coats. So I'm looking for any iconography, like arrows, skulls. When these figures were released, a lot of them had these. Extra details all over them. Skulls everywhere, that's what Games Workshop was known for, right? So in painting the details, contrasting colors, like red and gold are such great contrasting colors, so I'll paint, you know, red armor or red gloves with gold studs. Yeah, let's just double check to make sure that's all good. Paint these vents under the backpack here in gold as well. Yeah, the very last thing I'm going to do is paint, I'm going to paint these two beam things on his backpack in Abaddon Black. So as you can see, we're using a lot of the same three colors, black, gold, 
uh, red, gold, and black with flashes of silver as well. I guess you could say four colors. And um, what this does is it gives us a very unified paint scheme. Makes it easier to paint in the long run if you're doing bulk painting or batch painting. And it gives your army a very unified look. I'm going to let that dry for a while and the last step we're going to do before we put this guy away is a over the entire thing once everything is dried so nothing runs together is we are going to do a wash of Agrax Earthshade. This is the time as we're waiting now when you want to decide if you want to go back over and do all of the rivets in Balthazar Gold, which I am going to say yes. Uh, you don't have to, you can leave them red or you could also paint them silver if you want. I'm going to go with gold uh, just because I think it looks, looks pretty cool. All right, so we'll wait for this to dry, then we'll come back for the very last step. Okay, so the last step is Agrax Earthshade, which is gonna go over the entire model. This is one we wanna be careful because uh, anytime you put <clears throat> a large amount of any kind of shading wash over a model, it's really easy for it to pool in the recesses and all of the uh, lower areas because, you know, gravity, when you stand the model up, it's gonna make it pool in one area more than another. So uh, the first way to get past this is to shake it, shake your paint a lot so that the pigment kind of mixes with the, uh, with everything in the paint mixture. I think I've heard it said that if you let the shade just kind of sit too long, then the uh, pigment will separate from whatever causes it to flow. And um, when that happens, it tends to really leave this oily kind of oily uh, finish, which is not good. You don't want that. So, so shake up your paint pots, and when you apply it all of the areas including or especially the reds and you just want to make sure that you spread it around so that it goes in all of the necessary places <laughs> see how nicely it kind of goes into <clears throat> all the nooks and crannies wherever you need it to. Don't forget the bolt pistol, and don't forget the chain axe. Now my model looks something like this. <clears throat> yeah, so you want to keep playing with it, make sure that the, the wash doesn't pool too unnaturally in any of the nooks and crannies. And we're going to come back in part two and finish this up with some really easy highlighting and 
of final details. So thanks for watching, stay tuned for that.